Hello, welcome to my channel. Okay, so today I'm going to look at reasons for depression. Well, one reason in particular. Uh, now, I'm not saying that this is what your issue is, but it might be. And certainly if you haven't looked into it, it might be worth a look. And if you recognise yourself in any of the things I say, then another reason to check it out. So I'm going to talk about vitamin D deficiency because that has been linked with depression and given that many people are deficient I mean I've read different figures but millions worldwide so you know I've read 30% up 30% 40% and that's going on statistics now in my mind statistics are not always accurate because they can't always include every single person but you need to te test every single person on the planet for vitamin D deficiency. And that doesn't happen, does it? So in this case, it's likely, by my reasoning anyway, statistics are going to be underestimating the amount of people who've got vitamin D deficiency. So certainly if you live somewhere where you don't get much sun, like Britain, um, <laughs> there might be a chance you're vitamin D deficient. So symptoms, apart from low mood, could be that you're achy, you know, your muscles ache, you feel tired a lot of the time, you may have bone pain. Apparently, if you press on your sternum, so that's your breastbone there, and you feel pain, and also on your shin bone, so up here down here um, <laughs> then perhaps you're vitamin D deficient oh, get, getting sort of infections a lot you know they keep coming so I mean it sort of gives examples from what I've read colds and flu but it might mean any kind of infection but certainly there's a whole host of health issues which may be linked to vitamin D deficiency or exasperated by vitamin D deficiency, caused by vitamin D deficiency. And if you go on the Vitamin D Council website, I'll put a link in the description, they have, I mean, that's the whole website that's obviously, it's uh, dedicated to vitamin D. They have a section that says health issues, I think, and there's a long list of health issues that have got some link to vitamin D deficiency so you might want to check that out I think you know there's asthma on there diabetes various cancers multiple cirrhosis lupus arthritis so if you've got other symptoms physical symptoms and it's often the case that we have you know depression doesn't usually exist in isolation there's often physical symptoms we have as well then it might be worth a look. You might learn something. You might not, like I say, I don't know if this is your issue, but if it's never been checked out, it might be worth checking it out. Certainly, people who are more susceptible to vitamin D deficiency are people over the age, well, I've seen 50 and 60, so let's compromise and say 55. <laughs> so over the age of 55, if you're obese, if you've got dark skin, if you're pregnant, if you cover up, so certain cultures have got, you know, it's, it's customary to cover up. If you spend a lot of time indoors, perhaps if you're depressed, that's what you do, compounding the problem, perhaps. And also wearing sunscreen, factor 400, to make sure you don't get skin cancer. Interestingly, the incidence of skin cancer is going up. I was looking at some statistics yesterday, because I'm sad like that. Uh, don't put your tail in me water, daft cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, so for like from the 70s up to sort of 2013, they went or something. The incidence, has, it's slowly gone up. Most notably in the older end of age, sort of like, so, you know, 60 to 80 gr age group or something. But it has for everybody. Is there a link between wearing Sun Factor 400 and more skin cancer? 
perhaps you know we're, we're not we're not able to manufacture vitamin d and vitamin d has been linked to cancer prevention from what i've read so perhaps wearing sunscreen is mechanism more susceptible to skin cancer not less susceptible but i don't know conclusively does anybody know conclusively i don't know um something to think about though maybe do your own research on that certainly we can sit in the sun for 10 to 15 minutes a day it depends on your skin type it will also depend on whether you're obese you've got dark skin but in in this book where i've got a lot of my information from he gives tables of people from various parts of the world and kind of skin types and how long they should sit in the sun so some people 10 or 15 minutes a day that's assuming you get any sun and like i say i'm in britain so it doesn't happen very often some people need to sit in the sun for longer so if you've got dark skin for example it's because you've got more melanin in your skin and melanin acts as a natural sunscreen therefore you need to sit out longer to produce the same amount of vitamin d as somebody who's got fair skin so there's a few factors to take into consideration so you're susceptible to vitamin d deficiency if you're basically a 55 year old pregnant person female obviously who covers up has got dark skin and who's overweight and don't go out very often so if that's you you might be vitamin d deficient Anyway, joking aside, I will put a table of what's seen as deficient. So there's deficient, insufficient and sufficient and toxic. So this table will show you the levels. You get your test done from the GP. Well, that's where we get our test done. You, you may, you know, get a test done elsewhere, but um, that's what happens over here in the UK. You go to the doctors, usually. And you'll find out if you're deficient or if your levels are normal. I mean, even if the doctor says your levels are normal, it's going to be useful to see what those levels are because you may still be on the low side. Because if sort of like looking at my little chart here that I got from. Ah, no, Vitamin D Council, that's where I got it from. So you can check that out yourself. Not to 30 NGs per mils is seen as deficient by the endocrine society anyway if your level is 32 the doctor if your doctor's any good they'll still say it's insufficient um, but if they said it's kind of normal then you might think well i'd like it to be a bit higher actually but that's up to you and you can do that research yourself like i say i will put in the table and hopefully it'll make some sense the NG per mils is the American way of looking at it. And over here, we have NMOL per litre, I think it is. So it's a different measurement. And basically, you times the NG figure by two and a half to get the figure that we would have in Britain. But again, I will put all that on the chart and you can work it out. So how much vitamin D should you take? Well, according to Michael Hollick, the writer of the book that I've been showing you, he says that all adults and children should have at least 1,500 international units a day, which is much higher than what most supplements sort of say. Certainly if you get a multivitamin and it's got vitamin D in it, it's usual for it to say 400 international units. And that's like 100% of the recommended daily amount. He says that is woefully underestimated. It's just, it's not enough. The Vitamin D Council says that you can take 5,000 international units a day without it being an issue. So you have to see, don't you? I mean, if you're deficient, what your doctor will do, or certainly what happens over here, you get put on a loading dose, a mega dose, maybe once or twice a week that's happened to one of my clients just recently because I suspected she might be deficient because she's a depressed person who doesn't go out very much she is Indian and covers up obviously she's got dark skin and she was found to be deficient so she's been given a loading dose that's twice a week for, for a month I think 
and then she'll have a levels checked again. And then you need to be on a, a, ma a maintenance dose so every day. The sun is the best way to get it, but if you can't get it from the sun, then you need to take a supplement. Although Michael Hollick says that using a tanning bed is fine as long as it's got UVB lights because UVA is not going to give you vitamin D or create vitamin D in your body. I know sun tanning beds, we've obviously all been told not to use those and that they create skin cancer. But he says if you're sensible about it, it's a good way of manufacturing vitamin D. And certainly he's used it with clients who've not been able to absorb vitamin D because some people have got stomach issues, like people who've got like inflammatory bowel uh, disease, Crohn's disease, various other stomach issues. So they've not been able to absorb it. So he's used sun tanning beds to increase their vitamin D with good results. And they had a nice tan as well. <laughs> so, so maybe that's an option for you. Of course, you know, you can always speak to your doctor about, about it. You know, that, that's assuming your doctor's going to know anything about any of this. Um, but anyway. So I think I've more or less covered that. There's lots to know about vitamin D and vitamin D deficiency. Um, of course, I haven't covered every single thing because I'd be here till next Wednesday. Um, but this book is good. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. You know, this guy, I think he said he discovered vitamin D and he's certainly been researching it for 30 odd years. So he knows something about it. So that might be worth a look if you're interested, if any of this is sort of ringing true for you. And there's a vitamin D council. In fact, there's loads of information about vitamin D and deficiency. So, so yes, I hope this has been helpful, not too confusing. And um, if you have any positive results, if you see the GP and you find out that you are deficient, then and then get some vitamin D and feel better, let me know. That'd be awesome. I mean, any kind of questions I can I can try and answer. Um, so leave some comments if you want to. And you can subscribe as well. I won't complain. And that's about it, really. Uh, else? Okay, thanks for watching and popping by. See you again soon. Bye.